Today we're going to talk about blog design best practice for SEO. So at Siege, we generate over 90 million in traffic value for our clients, primarily through their blogs. So as part of that, we have a lot of strategy that bakes into the blog design to generate more results for our clients. In this video, we're actually going to break down those best practices from the category to the blog index to the actual post and allow you to take those forward to generate more results and success for your content marketing in 2022 and beyond. If you want to continue to stay successful in these very competitive markets, jam that notification bell, hit the subscribe button, and we'll be sharing more videos like this that break down our end-to-end -end process that generate over 90 million in traffic value for our clients per year. So the first part is kind of the strategy. It's the hub page for the overall site. So where we would start and think about design would be the hub page or the blog index page. So here is kind of going to set the framework for the entire thing. I think a great example of someone doing this very well at the time of this, this shooting is the Help Scout blog. So the first thing they do very well is they will immediately point their buyer personas to the areas that are most interesting to them above the fold. So if you're in a vertical where there are multiple buyer personas that use your product, in the content section, you'll often want to direct them appropriately just because if you blend this content, you're immediately making 50% of the work visible, unrelevant to them. So by allowing users to go to customer service or growth, they in turn will allow them to find only articles that are relevant specific to their use case and job, making the overall content experience better. So this is a great user experience best practice if buyer personas are present or there's multiple buyer personas that are clearly different in your specific market. There's some kind of section where it's most recent or recent articles generally on your blog. I think our whole world has changed over time in terms of thinking about blogs, not just as a list of newest to oldest, but it's still relevant for a blog, especially as user experience is concerned, to see a list of posts from newest to oldest. So having some kind of section, generally a little closer to the top, is a best practice. It's gonna make it feel more up to date and it's smart. But I guess the counter example is not just to have it be newest to oldest, you wanna have more of a curative selection Think of this more of a library rather than a blog post. And this is a great strategy that the animals team originally made popular and visible in thinking about how content sections should be organized. And to that point, a way of thinking about that is a curative section or set of sections that you can manually select the articles. So this is a great place to put articles that are converting well or need more SEO boost that you want users to see. This will also give these areas more SEO value by being higher in the architecture. So it's important to have some kind of editorial selection where you can manually create and select articles that are more likely to be seen by the end user and in turn, Google as well. From there, I think a good practice is to have a list of articles from each category that exists on your blog. Hopefully there are 9 million categories, but by going by category, you're basically solving for the different user intents that a reader would have. So ideally, you're thinking not just by persona, but also just subtasks they're trying to achieve in terms of thinking about your categories. So in these sections, we again see customer service and growth and culture in that main blog index and further more articles that you can find manually selected. You could also just have this be most recent. I do like the idea of making them manually selected that you can just constantly update those but this would further create a great more library-like experience for this blog section to be performative and get more readers actually to find articles that they're interested in, which not always is the most recent article on their blogs. Something that Help Scout also does well that I think is increasingly important is creating thumbnails that have a variety for visual interest. So you can see there's a lot of different color palettes at play in this section. They will even use GIFs on occasion that are low in file size. And these images will contain visual interest that makes it a pleasure to continue to read this blog section. You'll see on some blog indexes, maybe that, that hero image in isolation looks fine, but when you have that same brand aesthetic across 90 thumbnails, it will pretty quickly create lack of harmony and make you get pretty bored between each of the thumbnails such that you're unlikely to engage with one and actually read it. So by creating visual interest here, Lattice also does a good job of this with their thumbnails, 
you're consistently entertained or at least engaged until you can actually click an article that you read. Additionally, a blog index should not just be a list of six articles. I think for SEO best practice and to get articles higher in architecture, generally 12 to 15 plus posts should be visible per page as a good rubric. We see on Help Scout, they're basically right around this number and makes it so, again, it does two things. One, it gives users several articles to choose from so they can make sure to find something that they're interested in. But second, it also will get more articles closer to the homepage. It scales better as well if every page only shows six articles. The next page will only show six articles most likely. You can see how very quickly articles can be very buried on the architecture, be less instructive for search engines and users based on that one-to-one -one framework. Another good thing to include on any blog section is a call to action or a set of calls to action. I think one in the middle or above the fold like Help Scout does here is great if you immediately know this is something you're enjoying. People might also bounce back to the blog index after reading a single article, so it's a common place to include a call to action. A very clear, obvious one would be to subscribe to the blog if they're enjoying that and you think that's something a user would actually do. If you don't think it makes sense in your specific vertical, you could go a little bit more for the jugular and ask for a quote or sale directly. And then also a call to action in the end is very common and understood and not too aggressive. So this could be an alternate, it could be an ebook, the above the fold could be an ebook that's relevant to them. Having that one-two punch of calls to action will be instructive to getting people into your marketing pipeline and making sure these things convert at the end stages as you want them to. So from there, we would shift to the category page. So the category page, I don't think needs to be too different from the blog index, just kind of rephrase for that specific category. Again, Help Scout does a good job here where they specifically will just reframe around growth and culture or their other vertical to customer service to allow that user type to know they're in the right place. And each article will then be subsegmented around the specific subcategories that make sense for that section if applicable, or it could just be a master list of articles, ideally 15 plus again. You could completely redo this section, especially if content is important to you. An additional page template could make sense to do, but often a scrappy way would just be to reuse the index in a new skin with new text, maybe slightly modified, to create a faster way of getting to that same indexation that still works and is valuable. But you can maintain visual interest and if you're getting a lot of visitors here, making it different is always gonna be a positive experience to make sure there's some kind of intrigue at every step of the journey or they'll start getting bored about what they're, they're engaging with and be more likely to bounce from your website. As one final element on that, I think one to two sentences of copy that describes the category isn't bad, just to make it unique in the eyes of search engines. Sometimes custom meta descriptions that you get pulled into these sections could help, but that's often extra maintenance. Overall, I think just a sentence or two that adds value and descriptive for that section and the kind of content and value you bring is a nice way to just create some uniqueness to the section that adds value for, for users and Google. From there, we move to where most of the magic happens is the blog post. So the blog post brings the themes of the original blog index, hopefully it's pulling in those thumbnails into hero areas so it's not brand new in terms of what needs to be created. But the blog post is where most of our ranking weight is gonna come from. So a lot of effort should come from this. So increasingly, I'm seeing a lot of pops of color above the fold with hero images or just pops of color generally. But ideally, those hero images are not too tall. With new Core Web Vitals initiatives from Google and just general good user best practice, we're seeing these images are generally gonna need to be both small in file size and overall size. We think and it's still important to see pops of color up here for, to, to show people that they're, they landed on a good experience. But I think the days of a massive hero are gone. You want to have that represented in a smaller image in terms of dimensions and also overall file size to accomplish both elements in terms of SEO best practice and user experience best practice as well, because that giant massive hero might not load too well on poor internet speeds in the middle of nowhere as compared to your home office in major tech centers. Another core element is a quick answer area or set of areas. So that could be an immediate sub answer or sub headline section that can solve for the query that the user has, or you can have a key takeaway section or set of sections that give you multiple variations of how to do this that makes sense for your brand. But today I think it's obvious that you have to have 
some area that immediately draws your eye to get that quick answer such that it's obvious just how Google is trying to do it on their search results. That is showing that users want that too. So you should build this into your overall blog design to be natural and make this obvious rather than forced to get your best practice for this overall and solve for what Google and users are trying to solve for in 2021 and 2022 ongoing. Other critical elements of blog designs are not just the text itself, but the other HTML elements that are critical and allow you to create a great visual post without needing a huge amount of images. So some examples of this in practice are block quotes. So ideally this creates some clear grabbing of, of you and, and punch of color in order to do that. H1s, H2s, H3s are obvious, but hopefully they should, they should create some visual interest as well. Tables should have their own specific design applied to them and thoughtfulness about how they will look, especially if you're in a market where tables will exist frequently. Additionally, ordered lists, numbered lists, unordered lists, these elements should be thought through because they can be used in a, a very clear and distinctive way in terms of maintaining interest on the post as compared to just a boring black bullet. You can instead have punches of red or purple and maybe a background. These things can all tie in and make these posts more engaging. Background color is also important and can also pull out key takeaway sections. And that's something we see more and more as well, where you have a custom design area where you can clearly apply a background and it will create pops of color, not just in the quick answer area, but visual interest where a uniquely designed image isn't always necessary. Other things that are frequent and more common in high performing posts are actually table of contents that are present in body. So we see this on Invistopedia, they will actually have table of contents that you can jump to the areas that you want to get to. You can imagine if you're on mobile, having this prominent for you and in body is a great experience for getting to that quickly with just your thumb. It's also increasingly just where eyes are gonna go in a actual desktop experience as well. So it's, it's something to consider overall, especially as Google is quickly or commonly pulling from these jump to links, bringing them into the search results. They might help you with long tail rankings, all valuable things that can help you rank better and be better for user experience on a day-to-day -day basis. Also seeing those points of credibility or something we've talked about previously in our proof preview benefit or PPB video is getting people that credibility immediately and also making so they don't have to leave the page to do so. So if we look at Investopedia again, we can see that they give author bios that reveal on Hover, and this makes it so you don't have to go to someone else's author bio page to get that proof and credibility that this is a website you should trust. Investopedia does a great job of this. This is a very common, maybe not common, but more frequent way of establishing that credibility on blogs like this that you see more and more over time. As part of this, author names and dates above the fold, I think are critical parts of this equation. They create, I think, proof and trust that this is an up-to-date article, whether it's credibility, so Healthline will actually show the accreditation someone has in their name, and this will immediately create some meaning to the reader, even without clicking the bio, because they know a PhD wrote this article, therefore I should maybe take it more seriously, or a doctor, et cetera. All that kind of connects to higher performing work overall. And something as we think about with conversions, I think a navigation that follows you that's narrow, but not too tall, that has a contrasting button in the upper right with your call to action for you, whether it's a sale, get a quote, or to sign up. This is a common framework to allow users to browse throughout your site in a natural way, and also draw their eye to a conversion element that is gonna allow you to convert best and be highly effective from a design standpoint. To this point, the navigation should also inherit the main navigation. So we think blogs should be part of the shopping experiences. Our goal is not to make a magazine, it's to generate sales for our clients. So in that way, making it easy for people to get to back to the main site and also for SEO value from top funnel pages that generate links to immediately pass internal linking equity to those other pages just makes this a natural one too as well. Other readability best practices is that the font would be 16 to 18 pixels plus. The column width would be not too wide. You wanna make it easy to track to the second line. It can get exhausting for readers to track from a wide column to the second line. So we're trying to make that as minimal and easy and pleasurable of an experience as possible. Also make it not gray on white. I think a common thing that many people do with their font is they'll put gray on white background. This can often look good to a designer, but actually not actually be functional 
because of that. So try to use black on white. You can use your own approach on that and fonts to make it feel uniquely you, but would generally try to avoid gray on white for that readability. And at the end, including related linking is a no brainer for SEO. Some general best practices here is include three to four images and blog posts. Ideally, the thumbnails are not too large for, for site speed reasons. I like one thing that NerdWallet is doing here where they have one image that's kind of a featured related linking post and also sub images as well. But by all means, these can be very small file size images. So it shouldn't be a blocker to including visually grabbing thumbnails here. But something I noticed with these sections very commonly, a default use of them is to do most recent posts or even most recent in the same category. Our suggestion is actually to make it random in the same category you're in. This will create more of a silo effect where you're getting the most relevant articles to your growth or your customer service rather than just random articles where that same customer service person would now have 50% articles that are not relevant to them in this section. So by making that random, you're also getting older posts higher in the architecture. And for extra benefit, make this have a possibility to have manual selection where you could pull posts in that are especially relevant to make the article even more relevant and useful to the readers that are on it. Other miscellaneous items to consider are calls to action at the end of the post. If you have that nav following you, a good one at the end, it makes a lot of sense that's built into the template. You can build these in after, ideally they'd be by category. I don't think blog comments really make sense in 99% of verticals anymore. It's kind of outdated practice as people really aren't commenting they do that on social media instead. I think share buttons do make sense that are custom to your vertical, even though people are sharing less on these social networks as well due to the lack of visibility a lot of articles get when they are shared. But it's still good best practice. I think having those share buttons actually be colored in your blog design, like on Siege, we have red images that matches our brand aesthetic. I think this communicates a premium feel to people and it's not very hard to do with your website overall. So that's kind of the overall spiel on blog design, best practice for SEO. I know it's a lot, but ranking well is competitive world. So there's a lot of things you gotta do well in order to do that. We'd love to hear if you have any additional suggestions for blog design best practice. For sure, there's a lot of things, but there's many different elements that make you successful in each industry. So hopefully this was valuable and pulling out a few that you might not be using to apply your own blog design to be more successful from a strategic fashion as well. So if you like this, please jam that subscribe button, get that notification bell hammered, and let us know what you thought in the comments below.